Hello and welcome to the Oceanology International podcast. With me is Pat Power, who is the Managing Director of Fugro Geo Consulting Limited. And Pat, you've been in the industry for, what, over 35 years now. Could you just give us an idea of some of the changes that you've seen in that time in the industry? Well, I suppose the, the major change is moving into massively deeper water. But we started here with uh, the North Sea and one or 200 metres of water, and now we're dealing with sites in 1,000, 2,000 metres of water. So in the old days, we were using anchored drill ships and spending as much time waiting on weather as we were drilling holes. But these days, bigger, dynamically positioned vessels and uh, much less weather downtime and uh, more productivity, but more challenges, certainly in deep water. Yeah, I can imagine those challenges being, being what specifically? I suppose the water depth mainly, mainly but uh, we, it's the time involved running drill string, running tools to take samples and do in situ tests. Fortunately, a lot of the deep water sites around the world, the environment is, is or environmental conditions are more benign than, say, the North Sea, where the storms and the gales are part of the challenge. And uh, I suppose different soil conditions that we're trying to sample very soft, unusual soils off the West Nile Delta or off Angola. And, uh, but again, variability. And uh, whilst the North Sea is incredibly variable in terms of its shallow geology, the deeper water parts of the world are also variable and more variable than people expected. They were thinking of great thicknesses of soft clay and uh, what we're finding now is there are significant differences and all of which can impact upon the design of the structures that are, that are placed there and their foundations and mooring. So continued challenges that geology throws up for us and keeps us in business, basically. You mentioned you've been involved in projects all over the world. I mean, the Russian Arctic, the North Sea, West Africa, the West Nile Delta. Any specific projects you can talk about and maybe explain some of the, the problems and solutions that uh, came as part of those projects? Well, I suppose the North Sea is the, uh, the problems of very hard soils, soft rocks we encounter within the, the foundation zone. So the ability to develop the technology to not only sample the soil uh, that's beneath the seabed, but, but rock as well. So uh, a combination of tools to do that. West Nile Delta, again, I suppose there are also cultural challenges there. but. Um, Similar challenges to the deep waters off West Africa. Um, seabed slope instability is one of the, the key issues we're dealing with there. Um, even though the slopes on the continental slope are relatively shallow, only a few, few degrees, it's still enough to allow seabed landslides to have occurred in geological time. And what we have to do is establish that they're not going to be reactivated. And uh, so some of these deep water sites we have to establish first of all that it is safe to develop the site before we actually start to do a structural specific investigation for foundations or the installation of wells or pipelines and that sort of thing. When you're dealing with wind farms though you're talking I assume about what upwards of 100, 150 separate pylons doesn't that create a whole new issue? 150 turbines, individual turbines so individual windmills in a, a typical wind farm development and uh, so each of those maybe they're separated by 500 meters a thousand meters each one of those needs an individual foundation investigation and this is the the challenge for developers who are concerned about upfront expenditure can they find a way to reduce the number of foundation investigation boreholes it's uh, a real challenge and that's where building up a detailed ground model comes into play and again looking at the data as you collect it and to see if you've got the confidence to perhaps do a borehole at every other turbine location and in most conditions in the North Sea and in European waters it's very difficult to justify doing less but the uh, the cost is is not insignificant but the cost of getting it wrong is extremely significant. Yeah, so huge expense, a massive outlay. Is it worth it? I think it's essential for our 
security of energy supply. That's, uh, and I think that there is government commitment to, to go that route. So that's now taking a, up a, a big part of our business, the uh, focus on alternative energy as opposed to oil and gas. And it, it's an essential part of the business now. And it's a, I think it's essential to the UK and other European countries that don't have sufficient oil and gas resources in their own right. You'll be heading the Geotechnics Conference stream at uh, Oceanology International 2010 and giving the keynote address. Could you just give us a flavour of, of what you'll be talking about? It's about reducing risk and how we have evolved an approach to reducing seabed risk for offshore developments that, that, that has advanced over the years. And uh, it's, uh, It is this essential element of understanding that if you invest well in this phase of the project, you can reduce the risk and the subsequent cost uh, further down the road. And it's taken a long time to educate clients of this concept because in the past, a lot of the cost to projects has been buried. It, nobody wants to admit to the fact that had they invested a bit more money up front, they could have avo avoided significant uh, downtime and cost later later on. So more and more clients are beginning to understand this, but it's also part of an evolving process and using new technology such as geographical information systems and better data management systems so that we can bring the data together in a, a better ground model and we can uh, display the information graphically in a way that the people that sign the checks actually understand. Very thick reports were never so useful in that respect and uh, actually drawing a picture and having colour animation that shows their wind turbine falling over because their, the ground is moving, their, their foundations are moving more than they should or the seabed slipping down slope uh, has a marvellous effect on people in terms of convincing them that it's a worthwhile investment. And there'll be a whole host of other papers as well. Give us an idea if you could of, of what some of them might be. Well, I think uh, a number of them cover the probably the two key issues that we've already alluded to in some respects. The challenges in very deep water for the oil and gas industry and carry out surveys and site investigations in those water depths and looking for alternatives to using drill ships. So the evolution of seabed drilling technology is now reaching a, a reasonable level of maturity uh, and uh, two of the papers will talk about seabed remote drills and uh, the other area is the, uh, the wind farm business. So there are uh, at least two papers that will cover these questions of the optimum way to ensure that you integrate survey techniques from the uh, geophysical survey side of the business and the geotechnical side of the business. And the other one is talking about the risk analysis and using uh, a geostatistical approach to see if you can reduce the number of boreholes for a wind farm. What are you looking forward to most about Oceanology International 2010? Just seeing where technology is going to next. There are a number of disciplines obviously represented at Oceanology and uh, both the scientific and academic and there are always potential spin-offs in some of that technology. So we're always on the lookout for uh, technical and commercial applications of some, some of the new research that's underway. Finally, why should people in the marine technological and science industries attend Oceanology International 2010? Because I think if you're involved in the industry, you need to know what's happening. And this is, a, because of its broad coverage of technology and, and disciplines, I think it provides a, a slightly different perspective and a, one that's of particular value. And uh, as we move into a, the, uh, the need for much more renewable energy from the sea, I think this is a, another reason why uh, oceanology is, does provide a very useful insight into uh, to what's happening and what may happen and what can happen. But it's been fascinating hearing what you've had to say. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.